Hi, I'm Mike from Epic Deck Studios, and welcome to Sepulchral Guard, Paint by Numbers, Part 3, Steel. This episode is going to focus on the sword, the armor, and the front of the shield, the part that's not copper. To begin, I'm going to base coat those details with Lead Belcher. Now, I've transferred some of my GW paints over to eyedropper bottles. If you're interested in doing that yourself, you can find a tutorial on my YouTube channel. The link is in the card above. Now at this point, everything I'll be working on is adjacent to details that have already been painted. You can see I'm very, very close to a lot of the bone and the copper now. So it's much more important now that I am careful with what I do as opposed to when I started the bone and there really was no other paint on the model. And it just didn't really matter so much. I'm just being careful not to accidentally paint his knee or his foot. He's being a little more aware of my surroundings. Now, that doesn't mean you can't make a mistake. If you do, that's okay, and you can just go ahead and paint over it later. It's best to save all your mistake fixing to the very end, because if you obsess over it now, you may never get the model done. You know, if today you accidentally painted over some bone while working on the steel, and then you did it again while working on his cloak, and so on, you don't want to have to go back and fix the bone three, four different times. You just want to kind of get it all done at once. And so if you make mistakes, it's okay to just kind of let them be. It's also worth thinking about how you're going to be using this model. If this is a captain you're working on, or some kind of general, someone of importance in your army, you definitely want to fix those mistakes, but if it's one of a hundred, you know, skeletons in a big mob, maybe a little mistake here and there is totally okay, and no one's really going to notice compared to the giant swarm of bad guys coming at them. Now you could choose to do something much more interesting with this shield. I'm keeping it simple today, but the shield is a great place to add some character and some color to your model. It could bring in some red or blue or even a checkerboard pattern and it would look perfectly fine on the shield. If you want to go really crazy, you can even practice heraldry on shields. Now this one, because it has that large copper sort of buckler in the middle, I'm not sure what to actually call that detail, but it wouldn't really lend itself well towards heraldry or larger details like that. But you could get away with a checkerboard around it, no problem. Alright, with the base coat done, I'm now going to wash all of the steel with Nuln Oil. Now because Nuln Oil is black, you can also use it as a liner, that is to outline the areas that you're working on. So you'll see I'll bring it to the outer edge of a lot of the details, specifically around the armor, so it kind of creates a black line between the armor and the bone, and also here between the copper and the steel. goes on too heavily like that, you can just wipe it away with a brush as well. You don't need to leave a giant pool to deal with.
think at this point I just need to let that wash dry before I carry on. Once the Nuln oil wash is dry, it's time to apply a layer of Iron Breaker. So you can see I'm only layering this onto the upper surfaces, and I'm really leaving the undersides of these details alone so that they stay nice and dark. With this armor on his leg, it's almost not even worth highlighting it, because it's at such an oblique angle that it's mostly in the shadow anyway. So I'm just focusing on the little bit that you kind of see from the back. Last up, I'm going to do some edge highlighting with Rune Fang Steel. Alright, that's it for the steel on this Sepulchral Guard miniature. You can see it's nice and shiny at this point. If you did want to rust it up a little bit, you could use a color such as Scrag Brown to add just a little bit of streaking, or even some Agrax Earthshade would do the same job. Next, I'm going to be focusing on the leather of this miniature, which is basically just going to be his belt, the straps holding his armor and shield in place, and there's a little bit of skin hanging out from underneath the fur around his shoulders. I'm going to treat that as if it's leather as well. Hey, I hope you enjoyed my video. There's plenty more here on YouTube, as well you can join me twice a week at twitch.tv slash epicstudios, usually on Tuesday nights and Sunday mornings, Eastern Time, where I do stream my painting. If you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck, even given as little as a dollar a month helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing. Of course, you can also help by just hitting subscribe here on YouTube, or sharing this video with a couple friends. Thanks a lot.